Okay, so this next section is going to be using the unit circle to help us to evaluate some trig ratios. Now this is something that we kind of talked about a little bit towards the end of the previous lesson, but now we're going to get a little bit more into it. So up here at the top, we have our two special right triangles. So we have the 45, 45, 90, which as we learned last time in converting between degrees and radians, 45 degrees is the same thing as pi force. So we could also call this a pi force, pi force, pi halves triangle. Pi halves is the same as 90 degrees. Over here, we've got our 30, 60, 90 triangle, our 30 degree angle. As we talked about last time, this is the same thing as pi over six. 60 degrees is the same thing as pi over three. And then the 90 degrees, once again, that is the same thing as pi over two. Now, in looking at our unit circle, which we talked a little bit about last time in class, the unit circle is what we're going to use to help us to figure out exactly what these trig ratios are. Now, the nice thing is, Every single trig ratio that we are going to use is going to involve one of these two triangles here. <clears throat> um, we're going to be looking at those different angles that are on the unit circle, and this is why those reference angles that we talked about last time were important, because all of the reference angles that we are going to see today are going to be 0, 90, 30, 45, or 60. Okay? So uh, let's take a look at something that is in the first quadrant right now, just to kind of keep it easy. So in our unit circle here, um, let's say that we wanted to evaluate sine, cosine, and tangent of pi thirds, for example. So pi thirds, we know that this is the same thing as 60 degrees. So what we would do is we would start by drawing an angle at pi thirds, which once again is 60 degrees. So this would be our pi thirds. So from that pi thirds, it's the same triangle that we have here, but it's just kind of flipped on its side. So opposite the pi thirds is going to be the square root of three. Right next to the pi thirds, so the adjacent side is gonna be one, and then our hypotenuse is going to be two. So now that we have our triangle, now we can evaluate each of our different trig functions. So sine of pi thirds is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. That's what sine is. So the opposite is the square root of three. The hypotenuse is two. So this would equal square root of three over two. If we wanted to do cosine, cosine would be one over two because that is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then finally, the last one, tangent. This would be opposite over adjacent, so that would be the square root of 3 over 1, which in this case just simplifies to give us the square root of 3. Okay? Now this works the same way with any other uh, values that we would use, but let's talk about how we use our reference angles to find something that is not in the first quadrant. The first quadrant is always easy because you're just copying these one of those two triangles that we have there. Okay? So let's say instead that we wanted to do let's say um, let's stick with the pi thirds angle um, let's actually just do two pi thirds so for two pi thirds I'm going to show you kind of a trick that we can use with radians we talked about last time how we convert back and forth between degrees and radians by just using our conversion ratio so you could just use the exact same conversion ratio. So we would multiply this by 180 over pi, simplify that down, and in that case for this one, that would give us 120 degrees. But one thing that you can do is we can kind of look at this almost like a fraction. So when looking at radians, we know this is zero degrees and zero radians, and over here at um, 180 degrees, that is the same thing as pi. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at just the top portion of our unit circle and we're going to break this up into pieces. The number of pieces is going to be whatever your denominator is. So we have two pi thirds, so I'm going to split this into three pieces. So this angle that we have here would be one pi thirds. This angle that we have here would be two pi thirds. If we went all the way over to here, that would be three pi thirds, which three pi thirds simplifies down to give us pi. 
So that's just something you can use to help you figure out which quadrant it's located in, just so that way you don't necessarily have to convert each time. But if you need to convert by using a, the ratio we did last time, that is perfectly fine. So we know we're looking at this angle here, and we're looking at the same exact triangle. We know that our reference angle is going to be pi thirds, so we're looking from the pi thirds. So opposite of the pi thirds, so from this angle, the opposite side is the square root of 3, the hypotenuse is 2, and the adjacent side is going to be the 1. But now we run into a problem. We are on the left side of the x-axis, so that tells us that these x values that we have here are negative. So because we're on that left side, instead of making this 1, we have to make it a negative 1 instead. So if we're in either the second or third quadrant, your x-coordinates have to be negative. We'll talk about some more of these in a few minutes, but the y-coordinates, if you're in the first or second quadrant, your y-coordinate will be positive. If you're in the third or fourth, since we're reflecting that upside down, if you're in the third or the fourth quadrant, your y-value would be negative. Regardless of which quadrant you're in, your hypotenuse will always be a positive, though. So now we're going to use our unit circle to figure out sine, cosine, and tangent of the 2 pi thirds, which was this angle that we had here. So sine of 2 pi thirds, cosine of 2 pi thirds, and tangent of 2 pi thirds. So sine will be opposite over hypotenuse, so that will be square root of 3 over 2. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be negative 1 over 2. And then tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent, so square root of 3 divided by negative 1, which gives us the negative square root of 3. So you'll notice that we got all of the same numbers that we got from the previous one, just some of them are negative instead of being positive. That is going to be true for all of the different trig ratios that we're going to look at. Most of these values that you see are going to repeat themselves over and over again. They just might be in a different spot, or we might see them as a negative instead. Okay? Okay, so now this next one that we're going to look at, we're going to look at pi force, and then we're going to look at one that has a reference angle of pi force. So sine, cosine, and tangent of pi force, so we're just using our first triangle that we have here, the 45, 45, 90. So remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and that would be 1 over the square root of 2. Now remember, we can't have the square root in the denominator, so we have to multiply both the top and the bottom by that square root to rationalize the denominator. So multiply top and bottom by root 2, and we get root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi force is adjacent over hypotenuse, so for this one that would also be 1 over the square root of 2. So just like above, this would simplify to give us root 2 over 2. So then tangent of pi force, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that would be 1 over 1, which is just 1. Now we're going to look at one that has a different reference angle, but you're going to see that the properties are going to work the same. Our values are going to be the same, we just might have some that are positive and some values that are negative. Okay? So the angle that we're going to look at is 5 pi force. Okay? So once again, we can use our conversion ratio and just convert this. So 5 pi over 4, and then we'd multiply this by 180 over pi. That unit of pi that we have would cancel. So we would do 5 times 180 divided by 4, which is the same as 225 degrees. So we know 225 degrees, we'd have 90, 180, 270. So it's going to be in this quadrant right here. The other option, doing this like what we did in the last problem, we're going to cut the top and bottom into the number of pieces that we have in our denominator. So this is 5 pi over 4. So we're going to cut the top half of the unit circle into four equal pieces. So we have our first piece here. Our second piece would actually be the y-axis, our third piece, and then the x-axis would be the fourth piece. Then in the bottom, we could do the same thing. So one, two, three, four. So the top is cut into four pieces, the bottom is cut into four pieces. Now just starting at zero degrees, or zero radians, we would just count to five pi fourths. So we have one pi fourth, two pi fourth, three pi fourths, four pi fourths, which simplifies to give us pi. Five pi fourths, once again, would be right here. 
So this is the angle measurement that we want. Now, since it's a pi fourth, we know that our um, reference angle is going to be pi fours, or if we were using the angle measurement to go from 180 to 225 degrees, if we subtract the two, that gives us 45 degrees. So we know this is our reference angle and this is that 45 degree angle. We are on the left side of the x-axis, so that means that our x value has to be a negative, so negative one. We are also underneath that axis, so therefore our y value also has to be a negative, so that will be negative one. Our hypotenuse, like we talked about before, is always positive, so that's going to be square root of two. So now we will evaluate. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be negative 1 over the square root of 2. So similar to what we had here, just negative, so therefore this will simplify to give us negative root 2 over 2. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be negative 1 over root 2, which also simplifies to negative root 2 over 2. And then tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent, so that would be negative 1 over negative 1, which simplifies to give us positive 1. So once again, we got all of the same values that we got over here, just some of our values ended up being negative. Okay? Okay, so the last group that we have are ones involving pi over 6. So pi over 6, that's going to be the 30 degrees. So now we're just dealing with this triangle over here again. So for sine of pi over 6, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be 1 over 2. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be root 3 over 2. And then tangent, we have opposite over adjacent, so that's 1 over root 3. You multiply top and bottom by root 3, so that gives us root 3 over 3. So these are going to be the base values that we're going to look at. So now we're going to use this to figure out sine, cosine, and tangent of 11 pi over 6. So we've done once in the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant. Now this one is going to end up being in the fourth quadrant. So just like what we talked about before, we can just take this and we can use that conversion ratio from before. So 11 pi over 6, multiply this by 180 over pi. The pi's cancel, so if we simplify this in the calculator, that is going to give us 330 degrees. We know as we go around, we have 90, 180, 270, 360. So it's between 270 and 360. So it would be right here. And that reference angle to go from 330 back up to 360 is 30 degrees or pi over 6. Okay? To use the counting method like we talked about before, we would divide the top and bottom portions each into groups of six. So we have the, um, the top part here. So we would have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have one pi six, two pi six, three pi six, four pi six, five pi six, six pi six. Now you'll notice that a lot of those can simplify. So for example, two pi over six. Two pi over six simplifies to pi over three. Pi over 3 we know is 60 degrees. 2 pi 6, if we do 2 times 30 degrees, that also gives us 60 degrees. Okay? So we've got our 6 on the top, and then we'll do the 6 on the bottom. So we have 1 pi 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 would be right here. So that's how we would get there if we were just counting around. Okay, so from the 30 degree angle, the opposite side is 1, but since we're below, that means it's got to be negative. The adjacent side, so the one next to it, is the square root of 3. Now, since it's on the right-hand side, that means it's going to be positive. So root 3, get rid of these. And then finally, our hypotenuse is going to be 2. So now we can find sine, cosine, and tangent for these angles that we have here. So sine, opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be negative 1 over 2. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be root 3 over 2. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent, so negative 1 over root 3, 
which if we rationalize that gives us a negative root 3 over 3. So once again, we got all the same numbers that we got here, just some of them ended up being positive, some of them ended up being negative. So you can always use these three reference angles to help you figure out what the values will be. You'll just need to figure out which ones are positive, which ones are negative. Now I'm going to show you a trick that you can use to help you figure this out a little bit more quickly so that you don't necessarily need to draw the triangles in every single time. So when we are looking at the unit circle, there's a phrase that we're going to remember. All students take calculus. This is something that we're going to use to help us to remember which ones are positive and negative. In the first quadrant, all of your trig functions are positive. So sine is positive, cosine is positive, tangent is positive, every single time, no matter what. In the second quadrant, the first letter is S. This tells us that sine is positive in the second quadrant. Everything else is negative. <clears throat> so if we know that our value is in the second quadrant, we know that the sine of the angle will be a positive number. Cosine and tangent will be negative. In the third quadrant, the T stands for tangent. So tangent is positive. All the rest of them are negative. So sine and cosine are both negative there. And then finally, uh, in the fourth quadrant, C stands for cosine. <clears throat> so cosine is positive there. Everything else is negative. Now, we still have these ones up here. These ones were in the fourth quadrant. So we know that cosine should be the only one that's positive. But when we look, sine is negative, cosine is positive, tangent is negative. So as long as you know those uh, three base triangles that we have here, so the pi fourths, the pi six, and the pi thirds, as long as you have those uh, particular values, you can figure out any trig value that's anywhere on the unit circle, and you can quickly figure out if it's going to be positive or negative. So it really comes down to what you think is easiest. If you feel comfortable just kind of using that counting method that we used, figuring out where it's positive and negative, and just using these two triangles, that is the fastest and easiest way. If you need to go through and convert it into a degree first, draw it in the coordinate plane, draw out the triangle, draw out all of your side lanes, that is perfectly fine too. It'll take a little bit longer, but either way you will still get the same answer in the end. Okay, so most of the ones that you guys are going to see in your homework are just going to appear like this, where it's just going to ask for sine, cosine, or tangent of a particular value. Each of the ones that we've done so far, we've done sine, cosine, and tangent of each of those values, um, but now we're just going to kind of pick a few and just kind of run through them. So the first one, most of the ones we saw before were written in radians, this one is written in degrees. So we have the sine of 120 degrees. So we would start by drawing our unit circle. We have 0, 90, 180, so 120 is between the two. So we know that we are going to be something like this. So our closest x-axis, which is right here, to go from 120 degrees to 180 degrees, the difference between those two is 60. So we know that this angle would be 60 degrees. So in using our 60 degree reference angle, the opposite of 60 is the square root of 3, and we're above the axis, so it's positive. The hypotenuse is 2. And then the adjacent side is 1, but since we're on the left side, we know it's got to be negative. So now sine is just opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be root 3 over 2. Okay, the other way that we could do this, once we figured out that our reference angle was 60 degrees, we could just look at this triangle here. The sine of 60 is root 3 over 2, and then to figure out if it's positive or negative, we figure out which quadrant it's in. It's in the second quadrant, so we had all students, so S stood for sine, sine is positive, we know that our answer's gotta be positive. The next one, we have this uh, tangent of negative pi over six. So remember, if we have a negative angle measurement, that just means instead of counting around this way, we count around this way instead. So we just have one pi over six going in this direction, so one pi six would be down here. Now pi six, that reference angle is 30 degrees. So the opposite of the 30 degree angle is one, 
Since we're below that axis, we know it's got to be negative. The adjacent side is the square root of 3. We're on the right side, so it's positive. And then our hypotenuse is 2. So now tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that is negative 1 over the square root of 3. And so that would simplify to give us negative root 3 over 3. Once again, the alternative way, our reference angle would be pi over 6. Tangent of pi over 6 is 1 over root 3, which once again simplifies to root 3 over 3. And then using our quadrants, all students take calculus. So calculus is for C, for cosine. Only cosine is positive there, so we know that our answer has to be negative. Okay? Now this last one that we're going to do is going to involve secant. So secant, if you guys remember, this is the opposite of cosine. So we're basing this off of cosine. Now, this angle that we have here is actually too big to be in the unit circle. And you guys are going to see why. For this one, I'm going to show you the counting way. So we have 25 pi over 6. So remember, that means that we split the top half and the bottom half into six uh, lines. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 6 on the bottom. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now in starting here at 0 degrees, I'm just going to start counting around. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have gone 12 around, but we still haven't gotten to 25 yet. So that just means we need to keep counting around. It just means that our angle is coterminal. So we were at 12 pi over 6. So we have 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We've made it all the way around the unit circle again, and we are still not at the 25, so that just means we're going to keep going. So this was 24. The next one that we see is 25. We're at 25 pi over 6, so that means that our angle is going to be right here. So now we can get rid of the rest of them. And once again, just like before, you can use your conversion ratio, convert this radian into degrees, and then you would just keep subtracting 360 from it until you got a value that's in the unit circle. You would end up with 30 degrees or pi 6 because that's our reference. So from pi 6, the opposite is 1, hypotenuse is 2, and the adjacent is root 3. So secant, once again, is opposite of cosine. So it's just cosine flipped upside down. So instead of adjacent over hypotenuse, it's hypotenuse over adjacent. So hypotenuse is 2, adjacent is the square root of 3. So to rationalize our denominator, we multiply top and bottom by root 3, and this gives us 2 root 3 over 3. So that is what our value is going to be there. Okay? Okay, so for the last ones that we're going to talk about, every single one of the angles that we have had have been between each of those coordinates. Now we're going to talk about what happens if the angle that we have is on one of those coordinates. So for example, we know that this line here was 0 degrees and 0 radians. Let's say that we wanted to evaluate sine, cosine, or tangent of 0 degrees. So sine of 0, cosine of 0, tangent of 0. So what we're going to do is we're still going to kind of imagine that we have a triangle here. This is going to be our adjacent side, because it's the side that goes along the bottom. Our adjacent side, this coordinate point that we have right here, is going to be at 1, 0. Our unit circle, as we go around, each of those coordinate points are just one unit. So our adjacent side would be 1. So I'm going to write that. Adjacent is 1. The opposite side, which is how much we go up or down, we go up and down 0. So the opposite side would be 0. Now for the hypotenuse. We need to figure out what the hypotenuse would be. Well, if we have a triangle where one side is 1 and another side is 0, if we use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the hypotenuse, we have a squared, so 1 squared, plus b squared, which is 0 squared, equals c squared. 
Well, 0 squared just gives us 0, so that's gone. So 1 squared is 1. So therefore, we just have c is equal to 1. So therefore, I, our hypotenuse for these ones will always be 1. So now for the sine of 0, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be 0 over 1, which if we divide those just gives us 0. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that is 1 divided by 1, which equals 1. Finally, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that would be 0 over 1, which once again is 0. So those are the three values that we have if we are located at 0 degrees or 0 radians. Now, let's do the same thing up at the top. So now this time, we are going to be looking at this point here, which is at 90 degrees or pi halves radians. So once again, that distance that we travel is going to be 1, but this time we're going upwards. So that point will be at 0 comma 1. So now for this one, the adjacent side, the adjacent is what we travel on the x-axis. Your x-coordinate is 0. So now our adjacent side is 0. The opposite side is always the y value. Our y value is 1, so the opposite is 1. And like we talked about in the previous one, for these specific cases, the hypotenuse will be 1 as well. So now we're going to do sine of pi halves, cosine of pi halves, tangent of pi halves. So sine, we have opposite over hypotenuse, so 1 over 1, which is just 1. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 0 over 1, which is 0. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is 1 over 0. Now we can't ever divide by 0, that gives us an undefined value. So since we have 0 in the denominator here, our answer is just going to be undefined. So that is what we do when we're at 90 degrees. Continuing around. As we get to this point here, so at 180 degrees, so we're on the left-hand side, so our x-coordinate will be negative, so this will be the coordinate point negative 1, 0. So once again, our opposite side is the y-coordinate, so that's 0. The adjacent side is the x-coordinate, so that's negative 1. And then the hypotenuse is always positive 1. So. To do sine, cosine, and tangent, last time I did it in terms of radians, so this time I'm going to do degrees. So I'm going to write this as the sine of 180, the cosine of 180, tangent of 180. And now we'll calculate this the same way. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so 0 over 1, which is 0. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that is 0 over negative 1, which is 0. So those are what the values will be there. Now finally, going down to the bottom side, so this is at 270 degrees, or 3 pi halves. I also forgot to write this is pi radians over here. So this is at the bottom, so it's just going to be this point reflected upside down. So this would be the point 0, negative 1. So for this one, get rid of this, our opposite is the y, so that's negative 1. The adjacent is the x, so that's 0. And then the hypotenuse is 1. So last time I did degrees, this time we'll do radians. So 3 pi halves. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's 0 over 1, which is 0. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that's negative 1 over 0, which remember we cannot divide by 0, so this one is going to be undivided. So this is how we calculate the values for the unit circle, Anything that is based off of a 45 
or pi fours, 30 degrees or pi six, 60 degrees or pi halves, or any of these multiples of 90. If it is not a multiple of one of those, that means it's going to be one that we solve for in the calculator, but all of these ones on the homework, you need to write the exact value. So you need to leave it as the fraction. I do not want to see decimals for this one. You need to leave it in terms of the square roots and in terms of those fractions. If you have questions, feel free to reach out.